Family, friends, and survivors. Well, it's noon. The fog just burned off. So that one's in full light. And I see a little shading right here. And sometimes with a camera, it's easier to see which tree is doing the shading. Now, I knew last winter that I had a couple of trees over here that were shading this panel. But usually it's not a problem because the, the fog hasn't burned off yet. But today it did. So I can see that that cloud that's floating past that one tree right there. Uh, is just the top of that tree. The top five feet of that tree is shading this ray. But by the time the sun climbs in the sky that way, it's above that tree. Not enough to bother me. There's more than enough light. Like I said, usually the fog doesn't burn off for another couple hours, but it did today. Still pulling in way more than enough power, but... Sometimes it's hard to see what tree is shading because it's so bright, but if you use your camera and then you get behind your array at your solar noon, and then you can see which tree is doing it. You can see just a little shading right here. Another 10 minutes, it, it'll be moved on and that panel will be in full light. Well, that array's been in full light for an hour and a half. And that array's been in the light a little longer than that. And you can see how the shadow from the upper array, it, this time of year, it creeps up really close. And it moves across like this. And it never does shade those lower panels. So I checked it before we put the panels there. I, I looked uh, where the shadow was on December 21st. And when I saw that the shadow barely, uh, maybe a foot past the metal flashing there where it transitions to composition. So the shadow actually tracks about 18 inches below that array on the 21st of December. Well, that's your shortest day, lowest sun angle. If it's not shading there, you got it whipped. There's a lot of different ways to see what your shading is going to be like. There's a tool that you can buy that's just amazingly accurate. A sun finder and I don't remember the name of it. It's about 250 bucks. And then they have apps for your smartphone and all of that. And what I found works best for me is get out and look uh, throughout the year and see where your sun really is. And so we before we decided where to put dad's solar array, Last year, on the 21st of December, we went up on the roof and I looked. And, of course, we're praying for clear sky because you have to actually be able to see the sun and see shadows to be able to make it work. But we did that week around the 21st of December. One of those days, the fog did burn off uh, right at solar noon. And we were able to see so we'd know what kind of light we're really going to capture. And so for us, uh, if the tree's in the way, we just mill it up and build something out of it. And uh, there's two trees right in here, three trees right in here that it could be firewood. Um, only two of them are market trees. Um, I don't need the lumber. Uh, might make firewood out of them. But the truth is, it's not really affecting uh, us very much. Like I said, the sun usually burns off uh, in the late, the fog burns off in the late afternoon. Typically, uh, the sun will, and right now you can tell it's, it's noon, and the sun's way over there and way low. Usually, the fog burns off just in time for it to set, and it's set behind the mountain next to us yesterday at two or three minutes past four o'clock. So um, if it burns off, the fog burns off at, at 3, you've got a full hour of full sun, and that's it. So the rest of the time, you're trying to capture enough solar through the fog. And it's just the way it is here in the Pacific Northwest during the winter months. That's why we have way more solar uh, than is recommended. I've got a 
21 kilowatt battery bank and I've got almost 5,000 watts of solar and that's almost twice what you should have but because we have such dark skies and the solar gain is so low when it's foggy and raining um, you almost can't have enough solar but nine months out of the year I've got enough solar to uh, buy a new Nissan Leaf uh, Man, they're making some pretty amazing ranges with those new Nissan Leafs. But uh, it's probably worth more than my house is, so it's not likely I'll buy one of those. But an electric vehicle would be a really smart idea. Uh, for at least eight months out of the year, maybe nine months out of the year, we wouldn't have any fuel costs at all driving to town. So we're kicking around the idea of building one out of Carol's Midget. Or MG it's the perfect size car um, a small uh, Tesla s kind of bank they're the cheapest ones to get just like maybe two battery packs that they put in a smart car and a similar drivetrain uh, probably could build something like that if I did it myself around 5500 bucks and then just let the solar charge that and that's kind of a dream we're ho holding on to the car to do that um, make an experimental vehicle out of it with a special license and uh, we just we just might get around to that someday but we have that kind of power most of the year and this time of year it's rare to see the sun so there's still a little more valley fog lifting up rolling up the mountain we're up on the side of the mountain and the fog's still lifting up so it'll kind of hinder the solar panels for another hour or so you can see it's still lifting over there coming up off the valley floor that's several miles that way looks like the house is using 14 amps and we're putting 47 amps on the batteries and as that fog burns off that jumps up to about 120 amps but we'll be an absorbed by the time that happens so won't be a big deal yeah you can see the fog is burning off Carol's shop's going so we're still using 12 amps so again it's just a few minutes after 12 and the fog's burning off and that one is 970 watts out of a 1400 watt potential this one's 894 98 out of a, a 1900 watt potential and this one's climbing this is the one that's shaded and we've got 600.67 kilowatts so 670 watts out of a 1400 watt potential so low sun angles and uh, burning through the fog and the amps are climbing up. So if we look at how much wattage is actually going in, so I'm minus 115 amp hours overnight and it was charged yesterday, day since EQ. So 2,220 watts are going into the batteries plus the 250 watts or so that that represents that 10 amps so that's pretty good for a foggy morning and we've replaced 29 percent so far today since the fog burned off so we're climbing i got to get up to 31 volts for my absorb 78 amps going in the batteries and we're at 86 percent a few minutes after noon Now you can see that shading that was right here. It's over there And it'll be gone here in another 15 minutes or so and unobstructed So I don't think I'm gonna go worry about those few trees right there They're just on this one array and not very long. So we'll just let it go plenty of power and we sure can't complain about that have a blessed day